Hi, I'm Susan, and as you can tell by my opening, I've had lots of fun making turtles. And this is how I got my name, was I used to have bowls of beads at my bead shows, and I was the only bead vendor that had a bunch of turtles, and in these crazy, fun, silly colors, and everybody wanted turtle beads. When I went to start a website, I couldn't find a name. Turtle Soup Beads was the natural one that was available and it stuck with me. So that is how I got my name. And as you can see, I'm quite imaginative with my turtles. I think they're magical and fun and silly. And that's what life should be about when you're creating. And you can create these, they're very simple. They're great for refrigerator magnets besides beads. These would be really fun for a kid's party as little favors if you wanted to do a theme party or even have the kids make them. They're that simple, so let's get started. I like all my turtles to be a similar size, and the easiest way to do that is by measuring. You don't have to measure if you're just making one turtle or if you just want a mama turtle and a baby turtle. You can just do larger and smaller. I want them all pretty much a consistency bead size. That is the only reason that I measure. I'm going to show you how I measure just so that you can get an idea of what how much clay you will need for what you're doing i'm using this much for the shell and this much for the body with my darker contrasting clay i'm going to use this much for the front feet this much for the back feet this piece for the head just to give you an idea of amounts of clay i use because i don't really use a particular amount now i'm just going to take a little pinch off and this is going to be for my tail I don't need a whole lot. Now to start, this is why I say you don't really need a cutter, is I'm just going to create a ball. So if you have a cutter, you could use a square cutter, a heart-shaped cutter, it doesn't really matter. It's just that if you want consistent amounts of clay, a cutter will always give you that. And now I've made my ball and I'm just going to flatten it. And this will be our upper shell. I'm just going to take a little piece of scrap clay. This is just some scrap clay I have sitting on my table. I'm just going to make a little ball so that I get that nice little hump in my turtle in the shell. Now, if you want it to be higher, just use a larger ball. If you want it to be a little flatter because it's a jewelry piece, and I'm just putting it right in the bottom here now. With these pieces, we're just going to roll the tail. I'm just going to roll a little piece out for the tail. This will be the bottom shell. And once again, I'm just going to make another ball and flatten it. Now this piece I want very thin because I want this just to be the belly. And for each of the legs, I'm just going to cut these in half and that will give me four pieces. Now I'm starting out making a teardrop and then on the other side, I'm just pulling it down. So it's got a little crescent to it and then I'm flattening it. So you can see that I get that little shape and this other side, I'm just going to pinch thin. So when I turn it sideways, you can see. This is the piece that goes into the shell and this is the little flipper or foot that goes out and I'm just going to continue making four of those. So once again, make a teardrop and then pinch it on the other side. So you're making almost like a little crescent, flattening it and then just pinch it on the top so that you have that piece to tuck in the shell. Now for the head, I've taken that entire piece and made it into a ball and I'm going to pinch on one side and pinch on the other. So I have this little almost teardrop and I'm going to make a neck out of the other side. So I'm just thinning it down. And now you can see I have sort of like a little snake head, little lizard head. And now I'm just going to take a razor and cut my little mouth in. So you can see the mouth and if you want you can open it up. And you can still Point the head if you want it a little bit more pointy, open the mouth however you like. And then I'm just going to take my needle tool and put two nostrils in, one on each side. And I have some size 11 seed beads. These are just black seed beads. You can use any color you like. I'm using black because they photograph the best. And on the side of the head, I'm just putting the seed bead in as the eye. And you can see 
how that little circle that's the center of the seed bead becomes the pupil. Looking like I did a whole lot more, it makes a nice little indent in the head. And I'll put one on the other side. And you can see how you have a perfect little face there. A little head. And he's not very difficult to do, he's pretty basic. Well now we have all our body parts here. It's time to decorate. And how do I decorate? I have all these little cane pieces that I keep it's in these little boxes. This is literally just like the lid of a box. I've covered with some book pages and some scrapbook paper and I just line it with wax paper. If you have canes that are covered with gold leaf or le silver leaf, you can leave them like this and they won't stick to each other. If you happen to have no leaf on them, then you'll have to wrap them. Then I just keep them like this so they don't stick to each other. This is a flower petal. This is perfect for a turtle. It's like a half an inch. There's not enough here to really do much with, not enough to make a pot or anything, but it's perfect for just decorating things. So don't throw those little bits and pieces that you have away. I'm going to cut eight slices. I like to start out at the edge of the shell. Sometimes I start out at the top. This one I started out at the edge of the shell. And this one I started out at the top with the petal cane. Just depends on the cane, how I feel like the design is going to come out. I like them different every time. The other way I could have done it was up at the top. Either way, sometimes I'll use one, use it one way one time and then flip it. And I'm just going to fill in between those spots. And let's see what we have. Oh, I have these pretty yellow roses. I'm just going to put these in the middle. Why? Because I can. And let's see, oh, I have this pretty little swirl and I'm just going to put these little dots right in between here. So just play with what you have and see where it goes and you don't have to throw everything out. You don't have to start over. Whatever little cane ends you have, they are little treasures. And now I'm just pressing them into the clay so that they're nice and bonded. You can have them either completely into the clay or a little texture. And this is all up to you, what speaks to you. I'm going to use this fantasy leaf cane just in between there. Yes, I love the way that looks in there. So I'm just going to press that in. And now the fun begins. We just assemble his head. Let's put his head up here. Now I like his neck to be a little bit longer and I'm just taking my knitting needle and just blending that clay in so that it sticks into place. Now, most people like to put the fins or feet and legs like this, they make an X. They have one side going that way and one side going this way. I, I don't like them that way. I feel like there's not enough motion going on and I like them to be in different positions. Do what makes you happy. I'm just telling you, I don't want them in the exact same position. I don't want them all even. And I'm just burnishing them down. And our tail. Now I always tuck my tail up. And if you wonder why, it's because he's going to be a bead. And if this were a bead and the tail were straight out, it would probably break off. I just tuck it up like that, easiest way for me. Now, before I put that bottom piece on, I have to decorate it. Don't necessarily have to decorate it with the exact same canes. You can make it different. And this side, for some reason, I want to connect these. I'm just pressing them into the clay and I'm thinning it out. I want it to be big enough to go over his whole belly so you can see that design. I wanted to keep it a little simpler for the belly and I'm just placing it right on top there. And I'm taking a clay blender. You can also take just a pencil eraser. It does the same thing. 
I like the head to kind of go to the side just the way I like it to be and I'm going to move some of these little feet down. Now to finish the feet off I like to take the back of my razor and just give a little indent. It's not very difficult but it's the little details that make the biggest difference. And then I like to take my needle tool and just make some little designs on the feet and the head. And you can use these for anything. You can use them for Christmas ornaments. You can use them on little boxes. You can use them in jewelry. Magnets, these would be such cute refrigerator magnets. Very cute gift. And there you have it, our little clay turtle. How do you put the hole in? The worst place is to go across here. It just doesn't look right. I don't like the way it hangs that way. If you go straight down, then you're going to have the head in the way. I like to go diagonally. I like the way they hang. I have to look at it before I put the hole in and see how does it move. Each one of these is a little different and I like right here in between here and think about the fact that how he hangs will you have beads coming out of him a whole lot will you have a fringe will you just have a little bead at the end or just a straight piece of wire that you're just going to hang him alone it really depends how you're going to hang him how you put the hole in so think about that before you do it now you can put the hole in after you've baked him I find it a little bit more difficult I find it easier to do it before, get that hole in there, and then I have a pilot hole that I can drill through. So you can see he's just going to hang that way. Now just little cane turtles are not the only ones you can do. You can also do ones with a sheet of canes. Now this one you definitely will need a cutter for. These little turtles that are covered with just a slice of canes, you can see the edge of the clay underneath there. So make sure you remember that that's going to be a little bit of a contrast that you will see under your turtle. I actually like that. And you want it to be either complementary, like this one I have orange as the bottom clay, unlike the pink on the other one. I'm just going to use this cane, which is the stacked rainbow cane I've just done with less color. So it looks like a basket weave, sort of. And I've already sliced it, and this is just on my thickest setting of the pasta machine. And if you've watched me, you know I'm not really neat about my slices or precise because that kind of takes the fun away. And you can put these up that they match, they mismatch, whatever. If you notice, there's a little reflection there. That's the gold leaf on the edge of my cane. I love having that gold leaf in there. It just adds a little bit of sparkle. Now I'm just going to roll this out so I get it nice and smooth and flat and this time you do need a round cutter because this is how I get that shell precise and all I do is treat this shell as if it were a flattened ball I just proceed on creating my turtle with that another alternative is to just use a Natasha piece now a Natasha piece is very simple and you can use it on both sides or you can put canes on the other side depending on how thick it is or how much extra clay you have. And Natasha is just simply made out of extra clay. And here's all the little cane ends that I've cut out doing Millie in this video and some of the other stuff. And all I'm going to do is take those pieces and just chop them up. Push it back together. And I'm just going to roll all of those colors together into a log and twist it. And now I'm just going to compress it down. Now I just take my blade, cut it in half and cut those halves again. Oh, what a pretty color mix. And just match those pieces together so that you get a mirrored image. Well, I can just take that and approximate the size of my turtle. Let's say his body will be here, or you could make a larger turtle. Flatten it, keep it, try to keep it together so that you don't lose those edges. 
that center piece right there, just keep that together and slowly form it into your turtle shell. And that's how I got both of these turtles and I just made the body around that piece. And this is Matilda, otherwise known as Millie. She was swimming through the beginning of the video. I just wanted to give you a close up of her and her little sparkly eyes and how she really looks close up because you only saw her moving around in the video. I just want to show you quickly how easy this really is to make once you've made an armature. It's not that much clay, it's more time consuming than anything. So I've shortened it quite a bit, sped it up as much as I could and put it to music so that it was as painless as possible. So I hope you enjoy that. Thanks for watching. Now to create our mama sea turtle, I'm going to use things I find in the recycling bin, which is some paper. You can get new paper. This was some packaging paper that I had from where I purchased stuff. I always keep packaging paper because you can always use it for crafts. I hate to throw things away that we can always reuse for our crafts. And all I'm going to do is crumple this up into a ball. I want a ball for Mama Sea Turtle's body because she's a big girl. She's a very old lady and so she's She's got to be way bigger than the babies. That's about the size of my hand, but I want her just a, a scooch bigger. All I have to do to make her bigger is just cover her with more paper. But try to keep the body shape in the process of crumpling up your paper. That's really important. Otherwise, you'll have a hard time getting in the shape of your turtle. If you notice, I'm tucking underneath, sort of like a mushroom cap, if you want to think of it that way. So her whole body is in there, and I'm just keep rounding it. Now I'm just going to take some aluminum foil. Squish it down nice and tight so it's a solid shell. If this is not nice and hard, the clay may crack because we're not putting that much clay on here and so if you press on it, basically the clay is a sheet like this and you press on it and it's not hard underneath, it will, the clay is hardened, it'll have a tendency to crack so you wanna make sure it's really, really compressed and tight. And if you wanna put another layer of foil on top to make it tighter, do so. Make sure you have her shell really nice and underneath have it really pushed in. You'll feel it. You'll know what feels tough and what feels soft. And just keep forming it into a shell. And use the table as a wedge. That always helps. Now we want to make sure we have a little spot for our legs and our neck. Our head's going to come out there. Now for the head, I'm just going to make a small ball and I will connect the rest of it with some polymer clay. I just want to use the least amount of polymer clay I have to for this. And the easiest filler is either foil or paper, anything you can find around. No, the paper will not catch on fire in the oven because it doesn't get that hot. Now I'm just going to cover mama's shell with some clay.
Mama Turtle's quite big. She's a little bigger now that we've added some polymer clay to her. And she's much prettier. But we need to make her fins. And I don't want to waste all my polymer clay on making her beautiful fins. So I am just going to make them out of foil and then we'll cover them with clay. And once again, make sure it's pushed really tight together. Now you can see we've got the start of our sea turtle. And slowly build up you can smooth this out. If you get an air pocket, just pop it with a pin or a razor. Now just smooth all your pieces out and get them all covered so that you can put them back. And as you can see, my turtle grew. When you add the clay to the foil, things get bigger. So you want to be a little bit smaller than you really want finished. The fun part begins because I am going to decorate the rest of my turtle with some canes.
Now Matilda is all baked and I can just basically flip her over without any issues and put the canes on her belly. And I'm just going to take a little translucent clay Thank you. 